And thank you for coming here today. I got a question for you. I'd like you to raise your hand if you've ever had somebody wrong you and you had the opportunity to forgive them. Raise your hand. Raise them high. I want you to look around at people who have their hands down because that's what someone in denial looks like, right? <laughs> Each of us have had people wrong us. They have uh, desired life apart from God and we were the object of that. And we have an opportunity to either hold on or to let go. I uh, went to the Indy 500 for my 35th time uh, this May. And I was reminded of the 10th anniversary of one of my best friend's death, uh, Scott Brayton, who had won back-to-back -back pole positions and was the sitting pole setter of, of that particular race, was test driving a vehicle, a race car from his team. And because it had a faulty tire, after about 20 laps, it disintegrated and uh, began like this uh, metal on ice type of movement. And no matter how tightly he held on to the wheel of that car, because one of the tires um, was faulty, he was going to hit the wall. And he spun twice, and he hit the wall at over 200 miles an hour and was killed instantly. Jesus likened withholding forgiveness to a prison. And the irony is that the one who is in prison is me, the one withholding that forgiveness. And no matter how tightly we hold on to the control wheel of our lives, if we don't let go of what we're going to see, the four prison walls of withholding forgiveness, we will not experience freedom. No matter how tightly my friend Scott held on to the wheel of his car, because one wheel was bad, because one prison wall was there, he was in a prison cell that had a death sentence. With withholding forgiveness, no matter how tightly we hold on to the control wheel of our lives, if we don't let go of what we're going to see, all four prison walls of withholding forgiveness, we will not experience freedom in our lives. We will be the one inside the prison cell. So I'd like you to stand, and we're going to read a parable on how Jesus described this on how Jesus described this. Now, I want to set the stage for you. A parable is a spiritual truth thrown alongside an earthly one, and each parable has scholars think one, two, or three movements or points. I think this one might have three, and we're going to apply those three to each of the four prison walls that happen when we withhold forgiveness. And again, the irony is that we're the ones who are in prison, not the original offender. And uh, Peter asked Jesus a question. That's what's going to prompt this. Jesus has just finished with the famous reconciliation passage in Matthew 18. And uh, what we learn here is that forgiveness always precedes reconciliation. So Jesus is going to talk about a prerequisite of reconciliation. Now, what we're going to talk about today is not reconciliation. We're not talking about reconciliation. There is so much wisdom that needs to go into that and how that's done that that's a whole nother message. What we're talking about today is a prerequisite to reconciliation, and that is forgiveness. So there was this rabbinical tradition that if somebody was a repeat offender with me, I could hold a grudge. That's the teaching. I could hold on to the grudge and not let go of the four prison walls of unforgiveness. And so that sparks Peter's question. So here it comes. We're reading Matthew 18. This is this parable uh, from Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? How about seven? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times or 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. 
pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And here is probably the most sobering statement in all of Scripture. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Let's pray. And now, God, as we open your word and as we look at your actual words, when you were here, in the flesh. May the power of your spirit who is alive and here right now connect with the spirit of each person here. God, may the words be yours and not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, let's talk about, the, real quickly, the three movements or points of this parable, and then we're going to apply them to the four prison walls of withholding forgiveness, of, un, of unforgiveness, holding on. First, we have the king in the parable. And Jesus uh, basically is using the king as a character for God. And Jesus says he was owed 10,000 talents. A talent was 15 years' wages. So 15 times 10,000, I think, is 150,000 years' wages. Jesus just picked the biggest number his listeners have ever heard. Very important to get that. They've never heard it. Just extrapolate it today, and it's billions and billions and billions of dollars. And it's what we do. The guy who owed the debt, the biggest debt that no one could ever pay back, the parable's really clear. He, he says, I'll pay you back. And that's what we do to God. I'll pay you back with good deeds. God, I'll, I'll make all these rights wrong. I'll do it. But forgiveness is in the heart of the king, and he pays the debt, and he frees the guy from the biggest debt, and he frees you and me from the biggest debt anyone has ever incurred. Vertically, with God, you and I have had the biggest debt ever incurred, paid by another, and that's Christ. So when I'm in Christ, I have his heart. And if I haven't surrendered the wheel of my life to Christ, then I really haven't been forgiven. Stage two, kind of point two, movement two. This guy who's owed the same guy who was forgiven goes out, and he's got this guy who owes him 100 denarii, 100 days' wages, a little bitty amount. And he grabs the guy and chokes him. Isn't that funny? He's holding on, he's choking him, and he said, you pay me back. And the guy does the same thing. He falls down, he begs, he says, hey, I'll pay you back. I will, I will. And he says, forget it, you're in prison. And then that's point two. We do that sometimes, you know. We have the biggest debt ever incurred paid by Christ. And then we go out and we hold on to relatively little bitty debts and horizontally in relationship with other people. Does that make sense? And really, whatever it is, whatever it is, if it's abuse, and I know your stories, I've sat in offices with you, I know your stories of, of, being abu of, of women being abused by their fathers, of people stealing from you, of whatever it is, in comparison to the debt that has been paid by Christ, it's horizontal, it's small, it's little bitty. And I found that I can let go when I recognize the weight of my sin and the weight and, and the, the enormity of the debt that's been paid by Christ for me, it makes it so much easier, if I'm in tune with that, to let go horizontally in little bitty debts in relationships. I have to come back again where the vertical intersects with the horizontal and recognize that I've been forgiven as big as it gets. And therefore, Christ in me, I can release and forgive 
and let go of these little bitty debts. But that's not what happens all the time. And so Jesus comes back with a third part. And he says that God found out about it. The king found out about what this guy did. And he said, if that's the case, you're out. Because you can't be forgiven that big debt and feel that and experience that and to be characterized and known by someone who holds on to little bitty debts, debts in horizontal relationships with others.